As I was reflecting on this daily puzzle, there was something awfully familiar about it, and then it occurred to me that chess.com is being sneaky again. They take a position, flip it over, and turn it into a daily puzzle. Well, that's not going to work this time, chess.com, because I happen to be a fan of Jan Timmen, and I recognize this as a mirror image of a position he reached in an unfortunately losing game against Jan Graben, 1967 at the Amsterdam IBM tournament. If I'm not mistaken, it was the seventh round. Let's actually show the game and show how this position was reached. So Timon began with d4. We have knight f6, c4, and g6, the king's Indian defense. Knight f3, bishop g7 is the normal variation. e4, d6, f3, c6 was played right here. And bishop e3, pawn a6, then queen d2, pawn b5, now bishop d3, pawn takes the pawn, and bishop takes the pawn. d5, bishop b3, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, knight g4. White goes ahead and continues his development with knight f3, allowing the trade of the knight for the bishop. And now both sides go ahead and castle their kings. Queen b6 applies some pressure here to the d5 square. We do have it twice defended, but now he has another piece that can come in and add even further pressure. So. Jan played knight a4, hitting the queen. Queen to a7 flees to safety, but maintains that pressure. And knight c5 obstructs the queen's influence on the e d4 square. Knight d7 puts additional pressure into the center. This bishop is licking its chops, glaring at the queen's rook. And so Timon played queen's rook to c1 getting the rook out of the bishop's line of fire while simultaneously helping to support that knight on c5. a5 was played here. Knight g5, knight takes the knight, and rook takes the knight. Here e6 was played. Now e5 blunts the diagonal against this bishop. And a4 hits the white king's bishop, which retreats to c2. Uh, queen b6 puts the question to the b man. Knight e4 completely ignores that threat. And now bishop a6 is played, finishing his development and hitting the white rook. That hit is also ignored because white has a tempo move with knight f6 check. And that forces the king to h8. You cannot take the knight, I'll point out here, because it allows a very fast checkmate after pawn takes bishop. And how does black stop queen h6, queen g7 mate? For that reason, the king is forced to the h8 square, and white has ideas now of finding an Arabian checkmate. How can we make that happen? Well, he shows his intentions with rook f3. Queen does now take the pawn on b2, bishop to d1, and the queen's rook comes to d8, Super attacking this pawn. You cannot follow through with your plan here because now it will be safe to take the knight. And the reason that's safe is because after bishop takes knight, pawn takes. No longer is this a threat because after rook takes and queen h6, 
Well, you're just losing the game, aren't you? <laughs> so that would be a great a great way to lose the game by threatening mate in one, but you got mated first. So for that reason, Jan Timmen played the rook to c3, blocking the queen's attack on that pawn. That super attack is renewed with queen b4. And here we reach the puzzle position. Rook f4. And the idea is, yeah, you still can't do this for the same reason as shown before, so you want to defend this and maybe get your attack on h4. And that brings us to the puzzle, so let's go back to that here. And now you can use your imagination and see the mirror image. The white rook has just played to f4. The big problem with this is that it puts the queen and the rook on the same diagonal, and that points right to where white should move. So our first move in this puzzle is quite easy and obvious. Bishop to h6. Yes, I know that's actually h3, but remember that's actually a black bishop, and the image has been flipped over. So that created a skewer. Now uh, the c chess.com is being tricky again. That's not what was played in the game. In the game, Jan Timmen tried to go ahead and pin that bishop anyway, but that pin is completely illusory because after rook to h4, the bishop can take the queen with check, which is what happened in the game. And... Um, Graben went on to win shortly thereafter. The puzzle asks us, well, how are you going to deal with queen to d2? Because now, if you take my rook, I'm going to come over here with this rook, and you are in much, much trouble. Because can't take queen because of the Arabian mate. And if you move your pawn, my queen's going to come in and checkmate you anyway. So quite an interesting variation on the actual puzzle. And we have to concern ourselves with all of those ideas. All right, so what is the solution? Now we've got to actually figure it out. The rook is still theoretically pinned to the queen, but we can't take the queen because it's no longer check, and that's going to allow a checkmate. So that is definitely no longer in our arsenal. And now you can use your imagination and see the mirror image. The white rook has just played to f4. The big problem with this is that it puts the queen and the rook on the same diagonal, and that points right to where white should move. So our first move in this puzzle is quite easy and obvious. Bishop to h6. Yes, I know that's actually h3, but remember that's actually a black bishop, and the image has been flipped over. So that created a skewer. Now uh, the c chess.com is being tricky again. That's not what was played in the game. In the game, Jan Timmen tried to go ahead and pin that bishop anyway, but that pin is completely illusory because after rook to h4, the bishop can take the queen with check, which is what happened in the game. And... Um, Graben went on to win shortly thereafter. The puzzle asks us, well, how are you going to deal with queen to d2? Because now, if you take my rook, I'm going to come over here with this rook, and you are in much, much trouble. Because can't take queen because of the Arabian mate. 
And if you move your pawn, my queen's going to come in and checkmate you anyway. So quite an interesting variation on the actual puzzle. And we have to concern ourselves with all of those ideas. All right, so what is the solution? Now we've got to actually figure it out. The rook is still theoretically pinned to the queen, but we can't take the queen because it's no longer check, and that's going to allow a checkmate. So that is definitely no longer in our arsenal. This rook is also ready to slide over at the right moment. So we can actually interfere with both the queen and the, the rook with our bishop here by playing bishop to d3. Yes, I know it's d6, but we're black playing bishop to d3. You have to use your imagination, guys. Yeah, so if rook takes the bishop, then queen takes the queen and rook takes the queen. Then we can take the rook and there's no more worry here. Um, and if queen takes, then we can take the rook and the queen's no longer on the diagonal to infiltrate. And even though they can come over here, then h5 stops the attack. And we're good there. I think that's going to work. What else could he play? Just want to be sure here. What if he plays here anyway? That's the next question. If he plays there anyway, the queen's no longer defending. So I can give the check. He did play there anyway. So we cannot take or we're mated but we can go ahead and fork the king and the rook. And that forces him to take our queen, which allows us to take his queen. And that's all it made us do. Let's actually go back and get to a final resolution here to complete any kind of explanation that might still be foggy in your mind so the puzzle alternated and played queen to d2 instead. Uh, in the game, I'll just show you what he played in the actual game. He tried rook h4 anyway. That's an illusory pin because this comes with check, which was the point of queen d2. Uh, he went with rook takes the bishop, but now h5, and there's no breaking this open. He tried bishop takes the pawn, and um, Graben very wisely played g5. You don't want to take the bishop here because it allows an instantaneous checkmate after takes and checkmate. So back, back. For that reason, Graben played g5. Of course, that hits this rook. And he tried to come back. He's still hoping to get a discovered check here, which is still winning if he can get his rook on the h7 square. But he steps out of the rook's line of fire. One last try is to bring the rook over and capture the pawn. That fails to queen b1 check. And um, Jan Timmen resigned because his only move really is King F2. I mean, you can throw away a couple of pieces first, but King F2 and then you're checkmated. So he resigned. Now let's come back to the actual um, puzzle now. So... In the puzzle, this was the puzzle position. We played bishop h6, and the puzzle played queen d2. Let me first show why bishop takes rook right away here fails, and that's because rook h3 renews this threat, and you have to deal with the checkmate threat, and so that loses your queen. 
Note that you may have the idea of coming up here and here. I actually thought of this in the when I was uh, trying to come up with a solution, but it doesn't actually work because of the checkmate threat that happens. So if you play queen to um, f4, threatening queen h6 check and uh, checkmate on h7, well, you get checkmated yourself. Only legal move is to block and then checkmate. So, but we would play queen takes queen and be Jim Dandy. So I miscalculated a little bit during the puzzle, but I see it. I see it a little bit late here. All right. So anyway, what do we play? We realize that that can't be taken. And so in order to facilitate um, some initiative, we recognize that this could be taken perhaps with check in the right circumstances. The problem is that's defended. We also have to worry about this rook coming over on this file and getting the same checkmate just with the other rook. So that gave us the idea of interfering both with the rook's movement to h3 and the queen's defense of d4. Now, of course, if the queen takes the bishop, this rook can now be taken safely because there's no way to actually unleash the checkmate, as in the actual game, the pawn can come to h5 and white is busted. If you take with the rook, it's the same thing, it's just different. We're going to go ahead and grab this right here. And after rook takes the queen, we can now safely take this, and white's attack is busted. You cannot, you cannot say, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and play rook h3 because you're going to get checkmated if you take my rook. Well, no, I'll take your rook with this guy instead. And now these really hold down the fort. So there is no line. So in the puzzle, the puzzle played here saying, okay, I've got you now. I'm going to go ahead and checkmate you when you take my queen. Well, I'm not going to take your queen yet. I'm going to give the check and make you get out of check. And really the only sensible move is rook takes. And this is where the puzzle ended. We took the queen and that's all it made us do. Um, well, we got this, we got this. So, I mean, there's, there's so many ways to win. I guess you could try this. Rook takes the bishop. Um, doesn't really matter what you play here, I don't think. Is, is one better than another? Rook takes rook is answered by rook takes rook, and that's defended uh, rook takes the bishop is going to be answered by bishop takes rook and uh, we're good there if you play rook c takes this bishop it's probably your best hope but i think i can just simplify and um yeah i guess i can fork you here so that doesn't work either and hopefully that answers any questions that were still looming uh, about the the final move in the in the puzzle. All right, that was way more intense than I intended it to be, way more extensive and way more intensive. <laughs> Until next time, have a great day and play some great chess. Bye bye.